Hey, what's up, guys? Matt Cicla Dojo, back with another fish room update video. This is for the month of uh, November 2023. And I try to do these videos a little bit uh, quicker, not have them drag on for 20 to 30 minutes here. So I get through everything a little faster for everyone. Um, right now we're starting out with uh, looking at my big breeder pair of Perixis Carpentis Escondidos. Um, plenty of fry available from this pair, um, up to an inch and a half. Um, pair's doing really good. Uh, they just recently, I think, uh, fighting a little bit. We'll go through the, that process, see the female spins and whatnot, but um, they've always been good to work out their differences and she can go hide in that clay tube in the back so everything's everything's kind of what I've seen happen plenty of times before. Anyways they're doing really good. Let me know if you're interested in some of the fry off these guys. Make sure the fry are getting pretty nice and a good size inch and a half or so. So let me know if you're interested. On the other side I just have some grow outs. Um, I'm trying to look for another pair of my own. So uh, putting in the work uh, throwing these guys out and it uh, doesn't take long to get them this size from an inch and a half so let me know if you're interested we got a lot to work with here all right down below uh, turn the light on briefly uh, i have a lot more fry off of that big breeder breeding pair that you just saw um, these aren't the ones available right now i actually have uh, bigger ones which we'll, we'll go to that um, so in this tank, you're going to run and hide here, but um, these ones are definitely bigger, um, bigger batch here. And uh, anyways, I think, I'm, I, think I, had, I have them listed as inch to inch and a half, but definitely inch and a half plus minus is going to be a better size, um, a more realistic size here. So let me know if you're interested, guys. Next, next is the Islanus tank, and now I've been moving a lot of male and female combos off of these guys. But man, look at that one! You can see uh, kind of next man up philosophy, and this this male is just absolutely stunning. And I've been moving, I think, three male and female combos so far, uh, and I always take the biggest, nicest male with a nuchal hump. And uh, usually it's a female that he's spawned with before in this community. Um, this guy I might have to hold on to. I just, uh, something about him. But um, the other ones were very close. Not the exact same, just bigger. And actually the other ones had bigger nickel, nickel hump when I moved them. So just an absolutely fun species. And, and I do have some that are like two inch to two and a half inch. Um, maybe we'll go see those at the end here, but I know I said I was going to make these videos quicker, but I get stuck on watching these fish sometimes and can't do anything about that. So anyways, Amphilophus Islanus, got them available. Let me know if you're interested. All right, down below we have F1 Rio Gaius Feste. Um, these are inch to inch and a half range, I'm, I'm calling them. Uh, they're available. They're off my big wild cup pair. Um, so let me know if you're interested. Red Terrors F1s. Send me a message. All right. Something new here. Uh, 75 gallon. I used to have those Nandolydia yellow convicts, and I recently uh, moved those. And now I have, um, I was trying that second population of Red Terrors, the Narina ones, the Colombian ones, and these are all F1s. I've been growing them out for some time. Now, I have a male and female that are doing good together. Um, they're gonna, of course, be hiding because my garage door is open. Um, I wish that male would come out. I'll have to do some lighted video. Uh, and the female, of course, is hiding as well. And I got them divided with a single male. This guy was a little bit more aggressive. He's not going to come out. He's going to hang out behind that sponge filter, isn't he? There you go. You can see a little bit of him. 
Um, he's probably in that five to six inch range. Absolute beauty. And uh, at some point in time, I'll probably end up moving him if I can't work with him. Um, meaning find another female to get for him. But uh, in the meantime, I'll keep him on the other side of the divider. Uh, give that other male uh, something to focus on. But beautiful male here. All right, moving on. Going down below. Uh, 10 gallon. Uh, this has a bunch of those Jack Dempsey's. You know, I'm not really focusing on them too much, um, but I did throw a batch in this 10 gallon and there's a bunch of these, are like three quarters of an inch to an inch. Um, kind of killing each other off, but um, nothing that I really wanted to specialize in. Uh, so if you're interested, let me know and we'll go see the Jack Dempsey group at the end of my 180 gallon. Um, middle tank, something I'm excited about. I haven't pulled fry from the Geofagus brasiliensis, that red population, which are in my outdoor 300 gallon pond. Um, they're usually out there. Sometimes I make time during summer to bring them inside, but they're back out there and uh, I saw a spawn, so I siphoned them out and I uh, thought, why not grow some up in here? So at some point, these will be available if they do well. So stay tuned. Um, nothing over here on the left side. Now we move up to the 240 gallon with the um, red terrors. You can see this. This male is just getting huge. This is actually an F1. Um, he was one of my spawns at one point of a wild caught pair of Rio Gaius that I don't keep right now. And uh, he again is being very shy because of the garage door being open. See if you give him a second here, and he'll start swimming around. Let's see. Yeah, he's just absolutely growing fast. Beautiful fish. Um, and then on the other side of the divider, of course, is the wild cut pair. And you can see the female there in the back. I'm sorry for the tank being a little dirty. Kicking up all kinds of stuff and they're all skittish usually the garage door is not open and then uh, of course the males over here wild cut male again real guys wild cuts these are, this is the main, these are the the breeders of all the fry that have gotten out and into the hobby those F1s so let me know if you're interested you want to get some fry favorite species here for sure all right um, uh, before I move on we got a little batch of Islanus red Islanus uh, fry up here that I pulled from one of those really nice pairs that I shipped out um, so I'll be growing those out for a later time all right 100 gallon up top and so these are the remainders of those merino um, red tears and uh, I'm going to see what comes out of these. I haven't decided to move them yet. I believe there's going to be a, at least one or more females in here. But I want to see if a, a male really pops out here and see if a female decides to join him. But um, very slow growers. Fun species, my favorite, but definitely you got to work for it. With these guys a lot of spangles on on uh, on these males uh, really liking that about them so we'll keep an eye on them and then uh, keep an eye on might eventually move some of these bigger ones can't keep all of them unfortunately uh, down below um, these are more f1 Rio guys red tears these are these guys are on the three quarters of an inch to almost an inch probably an inch size um, these aren't the biggest ones, I'll be moving the bigger ones first, but got some more um, in the works here. Alright, moving on. Now let's go over here. So, it's a 40 gallon breeder. I've sort of just been growing out Carpentis. 
um, bigger size ones um, to you know try to try to get some uh, another breeding pair you know I go through a lot of batches to be picky on what breeders I end up keeping and uh, but a lot of these like in the past I end up moving them so bigger carpentas will be available these guys in this tank are on that inch and a half to two maybe two and a half inch size right now um, and because it's only 40 gallon they won't be here for a long time um, but hopefully I'll be able to identify something worth holding on to for myself but if not they'll be made available so stay tuned uh, down below Let's see more trying to get out of the glare for you guys more carpentas fry this is the youngest batch that I have from my big pair and uh, they'll be for down the line as well um, as we have multiple batches that are bigger than this all right next so next we have the F1 and um, True Green Tears. And you know what, thinking about it, I think we skipped the uh, Wild Cut um, uh, Green Terror tank on the other side, which I can go around and, and I'll swing by and, and take a glimpse at them. But these are the F1s and they're very skittish because the garage door is open. But the Wild Cuts, I was actually um, toying around with the idea of, of finding them a new home. Um, of course, they, I want them to go to the right home. I don't even know if there's another wild cut um, group of true green tears in the hobby, at least in the U.S. right now. Um, there could be, but I haven't seen any in quite some time. So hopefully I find a good home for them to go to. Um, someone is going to take care of them well and, and hopefully breed them if they uh, give that opportunity. Um, so we'll go check that group out in a second. Down below, three 10-gallon tanks. We have some or a small batch of Carpentas Fry um, in this tank on the left. Then we have Cubans on these next two tanks. So I'm gonna have to do some cleaning on this tank soon, but we've got some Cuban Fry growing out here. A lot of these in half an inch to some close to an inch now. Um, just trying to find a bigger tank to move them up to. Um, that's gonna be something I need to work on. But we'll do that here as soon as I can figure it out. Um, and then I pulled another batch of Cubans, small fry right here, so we'll see how they do. Um, good size amount of them right now, but they're off my Cuban pair that I end up keeping. We'll go check them out. Before we go this way, let's go see if any of the wild cut green terrors are, are going to stay out for us here. You know, they do really well when I do a lighted tank and they'll come out and swim around. But uh, when I get the garage door open there a little bit on the shy side. Let's see, a lot of them are hiding back there. And it may not happen today, but you guys can go see a lot of the video I have of them. Absolutely beautiful species. Incredibly rare in the hobby right now. All right, let's get my little chair and go check out the uh, multifaciatus and big surprise that clockwork always frying this tank pair on the left guarding some more fry Let's see if this guy will flare it up at me a little bit he'll definitely bite me when I go in the tank and uh, again close to that size he's going to draw blood actually I think he can already do it I usually try to avoid that, but female there, looking absolutely beautiful. And then a uh, pair on the right, of course they got fry as well. See them at the bottom. And it's like they're on the same exact schedule, I think I've said that before. Um, they, they both have their spawns at the exact same time, and then they both have massive spawns, and then their spawns circulate the tank and combine and they can't keep track of who's or who's and they just fight and flare up and you know guard the fry like they're all theirs so flaring up at the mail on the other side of that driftwood right there but a lot of fun the species and actually I'm growing out some of the fry here that should be available hopefully within within the next month here but we'll go check those out in a second um, down below 
We have um, Merino Red Terrors F1s, uh, those Colombian ones, and uh, just another batch that I got from my buddy who had the wild caught pair. And uh, I'm listening as inch to inch and a half. They are also available, so you can get two different populations of Red Terrors right now if you want to diversify. Let me know. All right, move around here. All right, so change this tank up a little. I used to have a second Cuban pair, Nandopsis tetracanthus. The male is the one I decided to go with and keep for right now, but the other pair was amazing as well. And uh, not in breeding dress. I don't think they have fry in the pot. Um, but really liking this guy. And this female is probably somewhere in the back hiding. Um, again, they don't get this open garage treatment a lot. Uh, and uh, trying to consider something to put on the other side of the divider. Right now, I just have a the largest of the firemouth cichlids. I think it's in the pot right there. Um, and it's not really serving its purpose. You need something that's going to be flaring up a little bit at this Cuban. So, consider another fish to put there. Anyways, Cubans are doing good. Um, before we move on, up top we have some more of the Jack Dempsey's. My little project where I see if I can identify and, and maybe even eventually pull one of the potential electric blue ones as I guess they have the blue gene, electric blue gene or whatever it's called. I'm not super knowledgeable. I'm just kind of curious at this point. Um, if uh, something pop stands out to me, I might pull it and put it, uh, keep it out in this uh, one of these breeder boxes and, and grow them up. When I'm being told, they uh, usually get picked on and killed at a young size uh, by the standard ones, and so just uh, just having fun with it. All right, <laughs> down below, uh, we won't see. I'm going to keep the lights off here, but these are the Paracormus multifoxiatus, the Freddy's Fry that I was just talking about. You can see them in that half to maybe three quarters of an inch size uh, right now. So I'm going to keep growing them out for a bit, and then they'll be made available. So stand by. Uh, we'll go to the 180 at the end here. Um, on the left, underneath here, there's a more F1 Real Guys Feste Red Terrors. Available down the line, and then these are some of the uh, Islanis that are available, with the exception of that one male I have my eye on over there. Um, he's a bigger one. I'm just keeping him over here so he doesn't butt heads with all the other males in the the other tank. But um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the remainders are available. You start out fresh with two to maybe even three plus inch sizes, uh, good size. And then you have a seven fish group, which is always recommended when you start out here. So there you go. And then last but not least, this is the 180 gallon with the Jack Dempsey's and the fire mounts. So we try to get in close. There's, I believe, the dominant male of the Jacks. Sort of runs the tank. And I kind of pulled that fire mouth out Another reason was the, the, these two were flaring at each other. I didn't want, you know, this is primarily for the Jack Dempsey's. Uh, however, they've been growing pretty slow. It's almost like the fire mouth, you know, in some cases have grown faster than them. And so I didn't want, uh, I didn't want these guys fighting any damage done to this um, male Jack Dempsey. And this female over here, pretty sure she has fry in, in that pot. really have the need to go pull them out. Still evaluating that other batch you saw in the breeder box, but um, yeah, having fun this community. The fire mounts. You got three pairs of Jack Dempsey's here. You can see the males flaring up at each other. While females, there's another one down there, and there's usually a female in here with some fry. Um, very easy to breed. Uh, as far as the species uh, that I've ex 
experienced. Um, probably had maybe 30, 40 spawns in the very short time I've kept them. And uh, got kind of the fire mounts as a, as a dither. I just don't want them to pick on the main fish. <laughs> so that's why I got rid of them. Anyways, lots of fun with these guys. And uh, do have all those fish I mentioned available. Let me know if you're interested, guys. And I appreciate all the support, comments, likes. Be much appreciated. Thanks. Have a nice one. Bye.